so in the second video on the logistic regression i will be explaining the mathematics behind estimating parameters uh, for the logistic regression and before discussing actual mathematical concepts uh, let us take a brief review of what we have seen in the previous video in the previous video i defined a very important term what does it mean by the conditional mean or the expected value of the output variable and we have also seen that uh, the expected value or the conditional mean is always in the range of 0 to 1 and there are many ways or multiple notations are present to denote the expected value which is represented either in this format that is the expected value of y provided that the value of x uh, or another way is representing the probability of y equal to 1 when uh, x is given and it is always in the range between 0 and 1. We also saw that the relationship between the conditional mean of a, or, or the expected value of a output variable and the input variable is represented by a sigmoid function which is nothing but g of z equal to one reciprocal of one plus e to the power of minus z and this sigmoid function takes the form of elongated s like this so these are the two concepts that we have defined in the previous uh, uh, video uh, now we are building the mathematical theory on these two important concepts. So in this slide, I am slightly redefining the problem of logistic regression uh, provided that we know what does it mean by sigmoid function uh, which is nothing but g of z equal to the reciprocal of 1 plus e to the power of minus z which values are always lie in between 0 and 1. So, and uh, this z may be anything. In order to, uh, in order to apply it in the in the context of the classification problem, what we are doing, what we are what we are going to do is that we are we are replacing this z either by a multiple linear regression, if there are more than one variables are involved, from which we are predicting the whether it belongs to any one of the binary class that is 0 or 1 or if it is the simple linear regression in meaning, meaning that there is only involved one single variable out of which we are defining uh, classifying the data observations in binary classes like for example in the case of the coronary heart disease problem there are there are only one single variable is present which is called as the age and the class in which we are going to define is that whether a particular patient has a coronary heart disease or not. So that was our um, uh, binary classification problem. Uh, and we are uh, replacing this uh, Z by simple linear regression model. Now when we replace this Z in the uh, sigmoid function, we get this sort of function in which we have replaced the z by simple linear regression model it is uh, it can be read as one reciprocal of uh, reciprocal of 1 plus e to the power of minus beta 0 minus beta 1 times x1 now this can be reinterpreted like this the g of z is nothing but we have seen that g of z is nothing but the probability or the expected value of uh, expected value uh, of a particular observation belonging to a class uh, 1 and by doing that we can define the uh, classification problem like this in the now the output number is always in the 0 and 1 and that number 0 and 1 can be interpreted as the probability of a particular observation belonging to class 1 like now let us take for example uh, in case of the age equal to 25 and if the class is uh, CHD has taken the value 0 it means that this number 
uh, this number can be represented out uh, the output of this number can be represented as the probability of this patient belonging to uh, class chd equal to 0 now what we are doing that the equation that we have uh, used uh, that we have defined by replacing the value of say, uh, by replacing the value of z in the sigmoid function we got this equation and now we are rearranging this equation uh, in slightly another way we are taking this uh, reciprocal uh, denominator on this side by multiplying this now probability of uh, y equal to 1 provided x is multiplied with the denominator of the previous term that is 1 uh, plus e to the power of minus beta 0 minus beta 1 star x and uh, on the right hand side there is uh, 1. Now again we are uh, multiplying uh, expanding this bracket by multiplying this probability and we get uh, these two different terms probability of y uh, probability of y equal to 1 provided x and probability of y equal to 1 provided x multiplied by this exponential term which is uh, equal to 1. And now when we take this uh, probability of this term of y equal to 1 provided x, we get this equation by moving this on the uh, this this term on the right hand side. So we get this term 1 minus probability of uh, of y equal to 1 provided x which is equal to this term. Now again we are slightly uh, rearranging terms. Now we get this term when we divided uh, this constant and on this side we get the e to the power of minus beta 0 minus beta 1 x. If we uh, ch uh, change the denominator into a reciprocal of both sides we get uh, this term and this quantity uh, probability of y equal to 1 uh, provided uh, x is given and 1 minus probability of y equal to 1 provided x is given this is nothing but the p probability ratio of probability and uh, ratio of 1 minus probability p and this ratio is called in the uh, probability theory it is this this term is called as the odds we are getting this odd term when we um, take the log of both sides we get this equation beta 0 and uh, beta beta 0 plus beta 1 times x1 log of odds. So if you observe this uh, the uh, left hand side of this term is a linear function and uh, the uh, right hand side of this equation is a log function or which is non-linear and so this equation is called as the generalized linear model or GLR. So this is only for um, mathematical concepts model is called as a generalized linear model and this is a very general equation of the um, general model for uh, uh, machine learning models machine learning um, problems now this term that is beta 0 plus beta 1 plus x uh, log of probability of y equal to 1 provided x is given to the 1 minus probability of y equal to 1 when x is given this quantity is called as the log of log odds and this log odds is nothing but uh, is derived from the or, as we have known the known that odds equal to p to the ratio of p to the uh, ratio of p to the 1 minus p and this is the log of this odds that's why this equation is called as the log of odds and uh, from this we can interpret uh, that if we change the value of this x by 1 the log of odds will change by 1 unit. So that is the relationship between the beta 1 and this uh, log odds uh, relationship and the relationship between the x and uh, probability of uh, y equal to minus uh, provided x is given is not linear in case of the logic now what we are going to do is that in case of the logistic uh, regression problem uh, we are now we are not predicting the class label that is uh, chd or ch uh, not chd 
rather than other rather than that we are predicting the probability of a given observation belongs to the class of chd or belongs to the uh, not chd so those these probabilities are we are calculating and if the that calculated probability is greater than a critical probability we are classifying it into the uh, label 1 like uh, for example let us consider uh, when the age is equal to 65 and the calculated probability um, uh, the predicted probability of the calculated probability uh, is suppose uh, 0 0.7 and our critical probability is uh, 0 0.5 then we can say that this person will suffer from coronary heart disease so now in case of the logistic regression problem we are not going to predict the labels of the classes uh, labels for the data of the data observations we are calculating the probability that a given observation belongs to a particular label or not so based upon that probability we are going to do the classification uh, using our value of our critical probability so this is the uh, method that we are going to adopt and we got uh, this strategy because uh, of use of uh, uh, sigmoid function and replacing the value of z in the sigmoid, sigmoid function by our linear model that is beta 0 plus beta 1 times x uh, and which which has helped us to bring our values from in the range predicted values in the range between 0 and 1 and which we have interpreted it as the prob conditional probability uh, for the given class. So this is the strategy that we are going to adopt. And now as we have seen that in case of the simple linear regression, we have used a method called ordinary least square in which we are trying to uh, reduce the uh, values of errors uh, of the uh, errors between the uh, data observation. So this error we have tried to minimize. And now in this case, uh, in this uh, in this logistic regression problem, what we are going to do is that so we are going to reduce the probability. Now suppose that uh, the age has 65 and the actual probability of belong a person with a age of 65 uh, suffering from the coronary heart disease is uh, 0.7. Now our we are trying to predict the probability as close to 0.7 means uh, uh, it may be 0.69 or it may be 0.71. We are trying to predict uh, uh, the prob uh, probability which is as close to as which is as close to as possible for the actual probability value. So that is the intuition behind using the maximum likelihood function which we are going to use uh, to estimate the parameters. Uh, for our linear regression model and this maximum likelihood function is uh, given by this equation which can be uh, which appears to be very complicated but it is very simple this is uh, uh, maximum likelihood function tries to predict two parameters in case of the simple logistic problem beta 0 and beta 1 in which it is the uh, this pi stands for it is calculating the joint probability means that it is calculating the multiplication of the probability and we have known, known that there are multi, uh, uh, there are uh, in our data set there are more than one values of n values are present for xi and yi in case of our child uh, uh, coronary heart disease and age problem there were one to the hundred entries are present so for all those 100 entries we are calculating the uh, individual probability value and which takes uh, y i takes either the value 0 and the 1 so that was the uh, data set that we have used now this uh, equation can be interpreted in two different cases y i equal to y i maybe takes the value 0 or 1 suppose that y i is taking the value of 0 you put the y i value here 0 if you have if you have substituted uh, y equal to 0 in this equation this term becomes uh, 1 because uh, uh, y is the power of this term and this term becomes the 1 and you are taking the this value and this value is nothing but uh, 1 minus y equal to 
one and you are using this uh, probability uh, the probability of uh, belonging a particular observation to the class zero similarly uh, y, when the y equal to one you are making use of uh, when y equal to one you are uh, this terms becomes one and uh, this this uh, this term becomes one and this term becomes zero so this term is equal to one and you are taking the probability of uh, a particular class belonging to a uh, belonging to one so that probability you are calculating and when you calculate all such prob probability you are taking its multiplication that is called as the maximum likelihood function or the value of the maximum likelihood function and here we are trying to maximize that value meaning that it is as close to the uh, as close to the observed probability value for a given all individuals so that is the intuition behind uh, using the predicting the estimation parameters now in order to predict the uh, uh, parameters what we are going to do is that we are going to maximize this value or maximize the value of this probability and in order to estimate the parameters uh, uh, beta 0 and beta 1 we are taking um, the derivative of this likelihood function partial derivative of this likelihood function with respect to the beta 0 while predicting the value of beta 0 and equating it to the 0 and in order to predict the value of beta 1 we are taking the uh, partial derivative of maximum likelihood function with respect to beta 1 and making it equal to 0 when when we solve these two partial differentiation equation we will get the values of beta 0 and beta 1 and to solve this partial differential equation there are many numerical of algorithms are present we are either using those numerical algorithms or there are other algorithms are also there like gradient descent algorithms uh, and some uh, packages like the R language SPC SPSS and the Python there are ready-made modules are there which uses uh, which predicts the values of beta 0 and beta 1 based on the given data set for that data set we are calculating the values of beta so we are adopting we are making use of those packages in order to know the values of uh, parameters for the logistic regression problem so that's all about the logistic uh, estimating parameters for the uh, logistic regression problem Thank you.